All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the next steps with Wichita State. We are so excited that you are here. Our goal tonight is to make sure that you have a better understanding of what the next steps entail to move through the enrollment process. So you may have questions about financial aid, about the housing uh, in the room selection process. Perhaps it's learning more about our enrollment questionnaire or registering for orientation. Uh, whatever it is, we have all the experts uh, in the room with us virtually tonight to make sure that we are taking care of those questions. So at any time tonight, you are welcome to throw some questions in the chat. We'll do our best to keep up with those uh, as each presenter is going through. In addition, students, uh, it would be helpful for us to have record of, of attendance of who's here. So if you wouldn't mind changing your Zoom screen name to your first and last name, that would be helpful for us as we're trying to keep up our records on who was here tonight. Uh, so uh, we're thrilled that you're here. Uh, we estimate that this presentation will be somewhere north of an hour, uh, and we're going to try to leave time for questions at the very end of our session. But again, you're more than welcome to keep asking questions as each presenter is going uh, in terms of entering those questions into the chat. So with that being said, I am going to kick off. Oh, by the way, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Bobby Gandu, and I'm Assistant Vice President and Director of Admissions. It's a great pleasure to have you here. All of you are admitted to attend Wichita State in the fall. We know there's kind of uncertain uh, waters out there with everything going on with the financial aid process. So we actually thought it was really important to lead off with our Office of Financial Aid. And uh, one of the managers from the financial aid team, Zhang, is here to talk through what the next steps are for the financial aid process. Take, take it away, Zhang. All right. Thanks, Bobby. I know, I know um, this has been a different year for financial aid nationally, and we are um, we understand and we hear you and we are here for you as well through this process. And we have some good news. Um, coming up in what's next in FinAid. Uh, so hang on tight. Um, again, I'm Jang, I'm here for you and uh, let's go to the next slide. So right now, what we're at in the financial aid process is that we have started to receive your FAFSA. So if you've done your FAFSA in January, February, March, um, and, and now we're finally in the mid-April, if you've done it and um, it's been submitted, we have received it here at Wichita State. Now, our next process, now that we've received it, is that we're going to start reviewing um, all of the files and making sure that it looks good, it's completed, or if you still need to um, fill out some more things from the Department of Education, if we're need still needing some more information, that's what we're going to reach out to you for. So if it's all good, um, still in a waiting process, um, uh, we'll be testing and making sure that everything calculates correctly. And if everything is complete and good, then here soon um, you will receive your financial aid offer. Um, so there's only two routes. So after we review everything, we test everything, one, your FAFSA could be great, uh, everything is good and complete. Then you receive an official financial aid letter in your mail. It will also be on your financial aid dashboard, which I'll show here in a little bit. Um, or if there's something that we need, it's not something that you did wrong or anything like that, we just need more information from the Department of Education, then we're going to reach out to you either via email or on your financial aid dashboard that says, hey, we need more information from you. Please submit that as soon as possible so that we can award you your aid offer. So that's where we're at currently, is that we are getting ready to review all of the submitted applications. Next slide. Um, so just as an overall of the financial aid process, you've done step one. If you haven't done that, that's okay. We're here for you. Our priority date for the FAFSA is May 1, um, but we're here for you virtually uh, or in person if you want to complete your FAFSA. You can go on studentaid.gov to get that process done. And then we will review your financial aid offer and um, um, send that to you. And you will need to look through it and see what you're offered. And then step three of the process is to accept any financial aid offers that you have. If you are um, needing to accept any loans, uh, you need to accept those and complete some additional steps. And then step four will be disbursement of financial aid funds, which doesn't happen until about 10 days before the start of the semester. Next slide. So here's your financial aid dashboard. 
you are going, this is where everything financial aid is going to live and it's going to be under your MyWC portal. When you sign in with your MyWC ID and password, you click into the My Finances tab. Everything on the left side uh, with financial aid links, that's where you click on your financial aid dashboard. And that's where your award offer is going to um, live, but also if you are meeting um, any requirements as well, that's where everything is going to be at. I do wanna highlight on the right side where the green side is under accounts receivable links with a student account suite. That's where your bill is going to show up around mid-July. Um, this is also where you can set up a payment plan or direct deposit as well. Next slide. <clears throat> so once you click into your financial aid dashboard, uh, you're going to see something similar to this. You wanna make sure that your award year on the right corner um, is always showing the current award year. So this one's showing 2024, 2025. Then you can read and look through. So for example, this is an example of mine here, here. It looks like I have a lot of different unsatisfied requirements. Because I have all those unsatisfied requirements, I need to make sure I get that done so that I can get my award um, aid offer. And you can also click through. Some of it says, please submit ASAP. And you can actually click into like, for example, the Federal Direct Loan Entrance Counseling. Those will all be links to a form that you can use and uh, complete and submit that to us. Um, maybe you've sent that to us, for example, the signed parents federal tax return. That one I've has been received by the financial aid office, but it hasn't been reviewed yet. So you can kind of see the status there. And then in the green, as you keep scrolling down, um, you see all your satisfied requirements as well. So again, you wanna make sure everything's checked marked in green, that it's all good to go for your aid offer. And then if you can see on the top part where right now we're in the home tab, the award offer will be on the next tab, which on the next slide, I'll show you some examples of how to accept your award offer. Uh, so for example, if this student uh, was given the Presidential Merit Scholarship, you can actually click into the scholarship to read more about it and to read the requirements um, and um, expectations of that scholarship. And that one was automatically accepted. Uh, now for this Kansas Shocker Promise, again, these are just all examples. Um, you wanna make sure that you go in and either accept the scholarship or decline. Um, and it's always broken up between the fall and spring semester of what you receive. Now for loans, if you need to accept any loans, again, you can click into the loan type and read more about that loan. And then you can actually accept, um, decline it, or you can modify it. So for example, if I need to borrow subsidized loans and I don't want the full 3,500 amount, and I only want say 1,000, meaning that 500 would be broken up each semester, then I can modify it and put just 1,000 in that um, amount area. And then you click submit after that. Next slide. So here's our current financial aid timeline. We've actually extended it today. Um, originally, if you are offered any scholarships like the Merit Scholarship or the University Freshman Scholarship, um, and right now we haven't awarded any Shocker Promise Scholarship yet, if you are offered at least the Merit or the University um, Academic Scholarships, you want to um, accept that on your financial aid dashboard by June 1. You also need to enroll by June 1 as well. So um, I know Aaron um, Hamilton will be talking about enrollment later, but it's important that you uh, this to know that this is the deadline and classes are filling up quickly. So just making sure you get that done there. July 1 would be the deadline, enrollment deadline for any students that are offered maybe any grants like the Pell Grants or maybe any work study amounts as well. And then mid-July is when you'll see your bills available through that student account suite. And then in August, around 10 days before the start of the semester, that's when if you're receiving financial aid, that's going to apply into your bill. Next slide. And then some tips for financial success, continue having those discussions with your family uh, about the cost of college, different expenses, personal expenses, and making sure you do meet those deadlines um, and get into the habit of checking your email and financial aid dashboard weekly. I know that like, yes, we've re re received your FAFSAs, but when I can't really actually tell you when we'll be able to package you yet. So just uh, every week, just have the habit of getting on your financial aid dashboard, checking your shocker email, um, and it will come soon. 
and then continue applying for community scholarships. I know our scholarship universe platform for new and continuing uh, students, um, that scholarship deadline has already passed, but there's tons of external scholarships that you could be matched up with in scholarship universe. So continue applying for those as well. And then it's just saving money for books or in your laptop and different housing as well. Next slide. And then contact us. We are here for you. Uh, we have a 24 seven phone line, but we are also here for you virtually if you wanna meet um, with our financial aid advisors and follow us on social media. We're always posting um, about our deadlines on there or just fun other ways you can be engaged with your financial aid and financial wellness. All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Nathan Lewis. I am the Associate Director of Business Operations over at Housing and Residence Life. Um, and I'll be going over some of the next steps you have on our end of things. Uh, next slide. So biggest thing is uh, room selection. We are actually in the middle of room selection uh, kind of season. It just started this week. So if you have not completed your application for 24-25, please do it as soon as possible. We are in the middle of rooms getting selected. Uh, that being said, if you are an incoming freshman, we will always guarantee there is a room available for you. That's part of our live on requirement. Um, however, since we're already in room selection season, there is a possibility that your top choice will already be taken if you're just applying today. Um, if you haven't selected your room yet, but you've already completed your housing application, you're ready to go in, uh, we do have a great website, wichita.edu slash room selection. I would encourage you to go check out that website. We've created some short videos that kind of show you how to select your room, uh, some uh, kind of best tips for selecting your room, as well as frequently asked questions. Got it all consolidated on that page. So definitely check it out if you have any questions or hesitancy about how to select your room there. Um, another important bit is if you are uh, able to get an exemption, you need to make sure you go in and complete your exemption form. Obviously, the most common cause for an exemption is the very bottom option there that you live in the uh, greater Sedgwick County area. Uh, if so, many of those come through automatically. We ask you still complete a form just to make sure things are good on our end. Otherwise, if any of the other exemptions listed under there are available to you, uh, please be sure to fill out that exemption form as soon as possible. Um, that way you can prevent having any registration holds or anything like that with the live on requirement. Uh, next slide. In terms of confirming your room assignment and getting roommates and suite mates, um, once you select your room, you should be able to see uh, essentially your entire suite. So you'll see not only your own room reservation, but also the reservations of any future roommates that you have in there. That'll be at the very end of that room selection process. And if you have a roommate group already selected, if you're the first to select, you'll be able to go in and pick bed spaces for everybody in your roommate group. If someone in your roommate group has already selected, then you should just have to go in and confirm your bed space that they've set aside. In terms of optional rentals, um, that's also an option after you get your room booked. Um, and also, it's good to be aware that you will need to submit meningitis records um, as part of our uh, deal with student health. That is something required for you to live on campus. So please fill that out as soon as possible. That's an important step in terms of being able to live in the dorms. And we block off uh, move-in time slots until you have those meningitis records uh, submitted. Uh, next slide. Biggest thing, and you guys have probably heard this a bunch already, is just to keep on top of your student email. We send all of our communications through your student email as well as your preferred email or your personal email and system. That being said, I mean, the student email is gonna be a more consolidated version of all of the things that we're gonna send you about housing. We have a lot of things coming up. Obviously, as we get closer to move in, there'll be a lot of communications from us. Um, so yeah, feel free to check that email often. Uh, it should have all the information you need. Uh, we also have uh, social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Our TikTok is a little less active nowadays. I would encourage checking out our Instagram. We're doing a lot of fun reels on there. Um, and then also want to make you aware of once you do select a room, you should have uh, confirmation emails coming in. If you were keeping uh, an eye on financial aid and other cost concerns, we're going to send out an email here as we get closer to summer, about middle of summer. 
um, that will include all of our costs and everything that we anticipate in terms of what room you've selected, what meal plan you've selected, and how those totals will look over the year. It'll also include some financial aid information should you need any financial aid to make sure you can cover those costs. Um, in terms of finding roommates and suite mates, we do profile matching. So part of your application, if you haven't done it already, is going to be some questions uh, specifically aimed at making sure that you have the best roommate experience possible at Wichita State. So a big part of that is making sure that you have people you gel with, not only in terms of your personalities, but also in terms of how you prefer your living space. Um, so once you do get in, you'll be able to search for roommates. Once you find roommates, we really encourage that you look at some of these next steps uh, in terms of finding if there's an opportunity for you guys to meet in person, like at an orientation, maybe planning your orientation on the same day. Uh, it's also very important to figure out uh, which items which person is bringing. Sometimes you only need one of a certain item for the entire suite. Um, and it's good to connect and make sure you understand who's bringing what so you don't bring two or three of the same item for a suite. We also have a packing list available on our main website, wichita.edu slash housing. We encourage you to check that out. That includes not only things we think you should bring, uh, like winter clothing that you may not be thinking about in August, but also some things that you shouldn't bring, uh, like some of our restricted items in terms of uh, like flammable uh, objects. Um, and then also I would encourage you if you are in a roommate group currently, but haven't selected yet, start having conversations about how involved you plan to be on campus, um, as well as your expectations for how often you plan to go out, how involved you plan to be with kind of things uh, outside of just the academic uh, part of things. Uh, next slide. Next slide, Bobby. Oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah, take me back. There we go. So move-in appointments are an important bit here. So our move-in process does uh, last an entire week. So we try to spread everybody out uh, to make sure that we're not getting too overwhelmed. That process is going to be available within your housing portal in mid-June. That should be the exact same place that you've submitted your housing application if you're not familiar with it. Um, and again, to reiterate that meningitis vaccination compliance is also important to submit. That's done via your MyShocker Health portal. If this doesn't get submitted, we're sending out reminder emails here in about a month, and we'll continue to send those out on a weekly basis. Um, so yeah, would encourage you to do that as soon as possible. If you're not in compliance, we'll definitely let you know. Um, in terms of billing, we send our billing over in early July. Um, a lot of questions come in uh, about how that bill is going to show up on your student account. Um, financial operations is going to split that bill into quarters, so you'll see essentially a monthly payment come through for each part of your fall semester, um, and that should show up in about August. So you'll see it in July, and then it'll get all split out by financial operations in August. That being said, those payments are usually due on a monthly basis with financial operations, so if you see a big number coming in July, wait until that gets split in August, and then you can figure out how you're going to pay for that throughout the semester. We also have optional rentals available. Um, we currently are uh, changing to whole new beds in Shocker Hall. So we no longer have big heavy loft kits. However, if you would like your bed lofted like lower or higher when you show up, we can pre-loft your bed. Um, we can also show you how to loft your own bed so you can move it around. That's a new feature of our new beds that we're really excited about. Uh, additionally, you can rent a mini fridge or a safe. It's important to know if you are staying in the suites, you already have a fridge. If you're staying in Shocker Hall, there's no fridge inside the suite, um, but we do have the option for you to rent those mini fridges. Um, we do have a limited number of mini fridges, so be sure to do that as soon as possible when you get the chance. Um, and same with the safe. We have a limited number of safes, but uh, we do those on a first come first serve basis. And again, move in week, uh, in case you guys are trying to figure out plans for coming down and getting moved in, it is that week from August 10th to August 18th. Um, we always encourage that you come in August 10th and 11th. Those are our full service move in days. So we're going to have a ton of staff on hand. It's like a big old party. We usually have balloons and a photo booth, and we try to really, really make it a great experience. And then we'll usually have some fun events there in that first week before school starts. Uh, that's a great opportunity to connect with your roommates, maybe meet some new friends in the building. Um, but yeah, obviously, whenever you can come down, be sure to sign up for a time slot that correlates when you expect to show up. 
and we'll be ready to help you get moved in no matter what. Uh, next slide. And of course, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, yeah, we're always happy to answer any question at any time. I know that with housing in particular, there's a lot of very specific concerns. Um, please feel free to reach out to us via email or via that phone number there. We have staff who are uh, eager to help you out, eager to make sure that you're comfortable and confident moving in. Um, so really any questions at all, um, yeah, please don't hesitate to let us know and we'll be happy to help. And that's a good segue, Nathan. I'm going to put you on the spot to answer some of the questions that have been coming through the chat. Yeah, First absolutely. Question, Robert is asking if meal plans are required. Yes. So meal plans are required uh, in terms of freshman housing, both Shocker Hall and Suites have a requirement for an unlimited meal plan. So essentially what that entails is unlimited meal swipes at the dining hall. The dining hall is currently attached to Shocker Hall. So if you are trying to be close to where you eat, we recommend you look at kind of those Shocker Hall rooms. Um, but even if you're at the suites, your plan will include the ability to go to the dining hall as often as you like. Isla asks, can I give my meningitis vaccine to someone when I drive down there for orientation? Ooh, that's a great question. We usually recommend it be submitted through the uh, Shocker Health Portal. Uh, just because that's a little easier in terms of student health. So uh, technically housing doesn't oversee those meningitis records for uh, essentially privacy reasons. Our student health on campus oversees all that. That being said, if you bring those, camp uh, bring those records in person on campus, uh, you can take them to student health who's housed in the YMCA on campus uh, and they'd be able to scan those in for you. Thank you, Nathan. Next question. Moon asks, what if my roommate chooses a room they don't want anymore? Is it possible to change the room? Yeah, so uh, kind of a quirk of our system. Unfortunately, you're not able to like go in and pull yourself out of the room yourself. If you have selected a room that you actually don't want, feel free to reach out to us. I would recommend calling us in that situation. Um, and what we can do is pull you out of that room and uh, your roommate will go back into selection and see what's currently available and select from what we have. Camden asks, if we haven't created roommate groups, will selecting dorms have a way to see who is already in that dorm or something similar? Yes. So when you're going through room selection, when you select a suite, so essentially you select the suite you want, and then there's a drop down menu for which bed you want. Uh, you should be able, when you select the suite, be able to see which beds are available and which beds are occupied and be able to see who is occupied in those beds. Uh, you should be able to also view their profile. So you can do kind of a, you know, a loose check, say you're really into video games, you want to make sure you're rooming with someone who has a similar interest in games, you can check their profile real quick um, and see if it's someone you think you would gel with before selecting your bed space in that suite. Angel has a specific question. And so Angel, I'm just gonna encourage you to reach out to the email address or the phone number that is listed on the screen here, since it sounds like it's very specific to your needs. Uh, I see if I've caught all of the questions. Um, Nathan, this is, I, I know something you could probably answer and some of us could chip in. Someone was asking about transportation. It's not necessarily housing, but transportation for people who don't have a car. Any thoughts? And I don't know if you could speak to uh, maybe not the volume of residents, but is that a common theme for some residents to not have cars? Are they okay to get around the city and the community? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. So what's very common on our end is for people to get a bus pass if they're not coming uh, with their own vehicle. Um, now, obviously, we we try to set everything up so, you know, you have everything you need on campus. We have services like the Ground House that's kind of like a self-service grocery store. It's almost like a little 7-Eleven you can use your dining dollars at. Um, that being said, yeah, usually we recommend you get a bus pass. We have a ton of bus stops right by Shocker Hall, right by the suites. Um, and yeah, we see a lot of residents use those. Uh, we have a great bus system to get around quickly and efficiently. Um, it may take a sec for you to learn it, but usually it only takes, you know, a couple days, maybe a week, and people are pretty comfortable getting around via our bus system. And I just reiterate that that bus pass, the city bus pass, is included in the cost of being a student, so you don't have to pay extra for that. Uh, Kyla asks, if you're in C, are you allowed to move in early SEA? Um, so it depends. If you are intending to move in early, we ask that you just reach out to us directly via the housing email. 
Um, there are a lot of situations where we allow early move-ins. Generally speaking, we just need to be made aware. Um, yeah, just to make sure that your room is all clean and ready. We also host uh, summer camps over the summer. So sometimes we're, we're cleaning some of those rooms just right up to move-in. So if you are intending to be here early, yeah, please let us know and we'll do everything we can to accommodate you. I had a question DM'd me and to me, and it sounds like this might just go along with the answer you just gave, but it sounds like they are wanting to attend Passage to Success before school starts and they just need to move, move in early. So does that mean they just need to contact you all to request that? Correct. And Passage to Success is when I immediately recognize. I do know we usually uh, receive word about Passage to Success from the team who runs that. Um, over in student affairs. So usually we're prepared for you. I would always say err on the safe side, let us know you're coming early. And uh, if we hear it twice, we'll be extra sure that we're ready for you when you show up. And we covered this in the chat and I would encourage everyone to take a look because there's some really helpful links. Uh, but uh, can you just briefly cover what is in the room in Chakra Hall, uh, beyond the bed, what else is included? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in Shocker Hall, yeah, the base amenities that you're given is a bed, um, some drawers for you to put clothing or whatever items, um, and then also a desk with a chair. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much the base. And then of course, you'll have your bathroom that includes a sink and a shower. Um, but if you do want any, uh, any sort of additional uh, furniture or anything, um, we don't allow you to take any of the existing furniture out. So that is something to be aware of. Like say you want to have a really big set of drawers, uh, you do have to keep the drawers we have in the room. Um, so you have to accommodate for whatever space you have with that existing furniture in there. And we had a question about it bringing additional furniture like a mirror. Is that okay? Yeah, you're welcome to bring a mirror. Um, again, biggest thing is just being aware of the space you have with the furniture that we have in there. Uh, with a mirror specifically, another thing to be aware of is that you're unable to uh, like put nails into the wall. So I would recommend a mirror that sits on the ground uh, as opposed to like a hanging mirror. Okay, and Nathan, you're a popular guy today. So <laughs> I'll just let you close with one other question because I think a lot of people might be interested in this. And I think you even touched on it, but just to reiterate, uh, there was a question about how do you, what's a good strategy to find future roommates? What would you recommend? Yeah, you know, honestly, when it comes to finding future roommates, uh, I would say that, you know, we, we put a lot of work into our roommate profile matching system. So generally, you should be able to see uh, it's essentially a percentage match with your roommate. We've refined that a lot over the years. So of course, from where I'm sitting, I'm all about making sure that, you know, that percentage is the best measure for making sure you have a good roommate experience. But honestly, based on my own experience with college and my own experience with housing, I think one of the most important bits is finding someone who shares your interests. Um, if you have somebody, you know, if you're someone who wants to go out and really be involved, make sure you have a roommate who similarly wants to be involved. And it will make it easier for you both to go out and enjoy all the offerings we have on campus. If you really are someone who wants to sit inside your room, I know I was one of these. I just wanted to play games all day. Uh, it was most important that I had a roommate who was that exact same way. Um, so, yeah, so I would say just be uh, be as honest as possible with yourself about kind of the lifestyle you hope to have when you come to campus and look for roommates who are, are trying to have a similar lifestyle on campus. Great. Right. And uh, there was a related question just about, uh, is there a, an app available to meet roommates? And there is a app that we make available to all incoming students, whether you're living on campus or not, but it's a great way to meet other future shockers. It's Zemi, and that's Z-E-E-M-E-E, -E -E -E, Zemi. It's available in both the uh, Android uh, Google Play Store and also the Apple Store for you to download on either type of device. And it's a great way to connect with future shockers. And we see and know that students are meeting each other as roommate possibilities on there, too. 
Yeah, and I, I would add one one more piece to that where uh, when you come on campus, just be open to meeting a lot of new people. A lot of people expect their roommates to be their best friends. Um, and while that does happen very often, you know, we see just as many people who are best friends with the person across the hall or the person in the floor above them. Um, so when you're here, yeah, anybody you meet can be your best friend. And you guys are all pretty close if you're in Shocker Hall or the Suites. So even if you're not roommates, definitely uh, find people you connect with. All right, Nathan, I'm going to take you off the hot seat. We still have more questions pouring in about housing, but I want to make sure we give time to our other presenters. So awesome. Next, next up is my friend and colleague, Aaron Hamilton. He's the director of our One Stop to talk to you about first year advising and their additional services. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, before I get started, Jang sent me a message, and I, I had told students earlier um, about the scholarship deadline, when you need to be enrolled. If you got a scholarship, you do still need to be enrolled June 1st. Um, so I want to make sure that that, uh, that I clarified that because I misspoke in the chat. Um, and Jang also asked to make sure to emphasize that if you get enrolled early and then change your mind, like change your major, that's okay. It shouldn't affect your aid because um, you should be okay moving forward regardless of major. So next slide, please, Bobby. So one stop, what we do is we consolidate all of the offices here, the services that those offices provide. So admissions, financial aid, advising, student accounts, which is paying your bill, and then records and registration into one place. So that as you go through your first year, you have one of my first year advisors there as your guide. So that any questions you have, you can come to us and we're the starting point. We know the answers to about 80% of the questions we get in each of these areas. And the other 20% we get with content experts in those actual offices. So financial aid, for example, we'll go to them and be like, it's a unique situation we can't really answer, uh, but we will go to them. And if Bobby goes to the next slide, um, you'll see we do it 24 hours a day, seven days a week and 365 days a year. What we do when you call in, if you physically call us or chat or do a web ticket, the person on the other end is a, is a person. It's not a bot. And the reason we do that is we, ver we verify that you are who you are, and then we can get in and look at your record and say, okay, we see you were awarded $1,000 on this date and it was dispersed this date. We can look at all the details of your student record and help you get the business side of being a student done eight to five. If you work at a restaurant and you get off at two o'clock in the morning, because that's when they close, we have students that call in at three o'clock. We had two hours all of last year where we didn't get a phone call or a chat. Two hours total in the whole year. We got six phone calls um, on Christmas. So my people are ready. We want to answer your questions. And we are not only available by doing that, we're also physically here on campus. The address listed there is where we're at now. That's where I'm at, 112 Jardine Hall. But we're actually moving to the Shocker Success Center, which I'm going to show you guys here in a minute. Um, next slide, please. So the first year advising process, that advisor right there, that's Monica Brokamp. She's one of my engineering advisors. What we do is we, we work with you on your initial schedule. So some of you have already done this. I looked at some of the names and I looked in our portal and you've already filled, you've already RSVP'd for orientation. When you do, um, and you're gonna hear more about that from Edron here in, in just a few minutes. When you RSVP for orientation, you also fill out an enrollment questionnaire. In that enrollment questionnaire, my advisors are asking, have you done advanced placement or concurrent enrollment? Um, how comfortable are you with math? We ask a lot of different questions. Are you a morning person? I don't want to put you in calculus if at eight o'clock in the morning, if you're not a morning person. That's we ask all these questions with the idea behind it is to help you be successful, to try to lift you up that first semester academically to get you ready for where you need to go. Um, we have students, we had over 800 major changes last last year which means our incoming class changed their major 800 times, which sounds like a lot, it's actually not. When you come into college, there's a lot to explore. There's a lot of classes. Um, so for those of you that were like me that 
I majored in undecided for a year and a half and you don't know what to do, that's okay. My advisors are here to help kind of coach you through that, work with a shocker career accelerator to do some um, assessments to see what you're good at, et cetera. Next slide, Bobby. So the process for enrollment, for those of you that have not done it yet, um, you just go to wichita.edu backslash orientation. And I put it, uh, looks like Autumn put it there in the chat as well. Um, and you just start signing up. Um, so RSVP just means you're signing up and to attend an orientation. But when you do that, you fill out the enrollment questionnaire that I mentioned. Um, and for us to build your, once we get that, We'll pull that and we'll start building your schedule. So you're not going to get it the next day. We we have to build schedules for the entire incoming class. So it's going to be a few days before you get it. But we take all the information you gave us. We ask for unofficial screenshots of transcripts, ACT or SAT scores, AP classes, et cetera. They can be unofficial to start. We'll need official ones once summer rolls around. But we take that. We build a schedule. And then we send it back to you and say, does this look like what you were thinking? And you can either say, yes, I accept, or no, I do not. One thing we do automatically is when we send it to you, you are enrolled in those classes. So you're locked in, which doesn't mean you're committed to WSU. What it means is you've got those times and days for those classes, which doesn't sound like a big deal yet, but come June 1st, when most of our classes are full, and people come in like, I want this and this, and I want it at 9.30 and 11. We're like, mm -hmm, it's not going to happen. You guys, if you can get it in early, you're going to get the schedule um, at the times you want um, as best we can. So we send that to you. We give you 10 days to think it over. Um, if you have questions, we just go back and forth. You do not have to come to campus for this. We do it all before you get here. Um, and we do it electronically. We can do it by phone. We can do Zoom. We can you name it. Um, but if you're good with the schedule, we'll go with it. If not, we'll, my advisors will work with you to make sure, okay, what about this? What about this? Um, or if you just have questions in general and you're like, I don't know why I would need to take this class. Happy to work with you. We want to make sure we get you in the right classes to help you on your path towards a degree. Next, next slide, please, Bobby. So these are my advisors. Um, with one slight change. So Constantine Gartelos, he just started. Um, you may be, if you've already signed up for engineering with, and your last name starts with A through L, you may have, may have heard from Monica or from um, Kylie Johnson. Kylie's my assistant director. She supervises all the advisors. Um, Constantine's new. You'll be hearing from him starting this summer. But the rest of it, the way we do it is it's broken down by academic college, so based, based on your major. And they are trained on every single major within that academic college. One of the things I really like about my office is if Michelle in business, you're meeting with her and you're like, mm, I'm going to change my major to nursing. We literally walk 10 feet down the hall to Hannah's office. You don't have to go anywhere. It's all right here. Um, so that's just a, sc a screenshot of the names. Can you go to the next one, Bobby? This is what I want to talk to you about. Okay, so your class will be the first one that gets to experience the Shocker Success Center. We're going to be moving in there in late June. So by the time you get here, it'll be up and running. And the Shocker Success Center, it's right in the middle of campus. It's right next to the Student Center. And every single group that's moving in there is student faces, facing, meaning any service you need for the most part is going to be in there. Um, and I put these bullets in order, you'd probably think of why didn't you put them in alphabetical order, but there's a reason. So first year advising is gonna be in there. So when you come in, you're actually gonna come in the door on this picture, go to your left and your advisor's right there. Tutoring and supplemental instruction, as you get into your classes, if you need some support. Um, for me, when I came to college, I didn't have great study skills. I honestly didn't know how to study. I kind of slid through in, in high school. Um, and college is much more academically rigorous and it's a faster pace. Um, if you took calculus in high school and it took two semesters, we condensed that down as one semester, for example. Um, so tutoring and supplemental instruction is there to help you academically, make sure you're staying on top of things, you're learning concepts, 
et cetera. And accommodation and testing is going to be in there with us too. And what they do is if a student has an IEP or any kind of accommodations they, they need to have made, um, and I'll put the link in here um, once Aaron comes up, um, you can work with them. And that way we make sure we provide you the proper um, testing space work with faculty to make sure they're making accommodations um, that need to be made. Some of you ask about military and GI Bill. They're going to be in the building. So you may come meet with your first year advisor. And then afterwards, we'll literally walk you up to the third floor to Larry and Brady and be like, here they are. Um, they're going to have their own um, place just for military and better or for veterans to hang out um, and dependents of veterans. Um, and active duty or anybody military related. Um, they've got a space up on the third floor uh, where you can hang out and they help you, but they help you with that GI Bill paperwork. They help you with any military related paperwork that you have. They'll be in there, our care team. The reason I put that on there is um, if students are struggling, if maybe they've had a loss in their family and they're gonna have to go back to Dallas or wherever you live, they're there to help you through that process to be like, okay, do we need to draw classes? Do we need to check your financial aid? They're there to, to take care of you as you go through that. So you're not alone and you don't have to just figure it out. And then the shocker locker and career closet are gonna be in there. And what those are is shocker locker is food. Um, you know, your college students, sometimes you may want food, it's free. You go over there and you get some food and you leave. Um, it's pretty easy. It's open to all students. And the career closet is there for as you progress through your schooling and you need to go get a job or interview. Um, it provides new and I think some a couple of gently used uh, pieces of clothing for you to dress and have that for your interview. So if you, you know, like when I came to college, I didn't have a suit. Um, the career closet can provide those things for you. It's all going to be in one building. We're going to have students there to guide you so you can walk in and be like, I don't know, I need to take a test and I was supposed to come to this building. We'll get you there. Um, it's I'm, I'm really excited for you all to see this. Um, next slide. So I wanted to make sure you guys had the inf our information on here. Um, I think my light just went off, so you probably I'm now standing in the dark. That's my direct line. That's my assistant director's direct line. You're not getting a phone tree when you call those two. Um, we're here to help. And um, we're that's what we do all day, every day. And, and it's exciting and it's fun. Um, Bobby, are there questions? There's a couple. A couple of students might be having uh, problems accessing the orientation website. So uh, the coaching we've tried to give is to go, first of all, to wichita.edu slash orientation and make sure they have activated or created their MyWSU account. Yeah. Is there other advice you would give, Aaron? No, as long as you've activated that, you should get your MyWSU ID from, from Bobby's office in your letter of admission. Um, so once you have that, you can create your MyWSU account. You just go in, um, say manage password and it it walks you through um, each step. If you do have problems with that, you can call, oh my goodness, I didn't put the 800 number in there. I'll, I'll put it in the chat here in, in just a minute, um, but you can call them and, and my staff can walk you through getting that set up and stay on the phone with you as that um, is, is being built. I also see a couple of people say they have a hold. Um, holds are in there. For various reasons, so Shocker Connection is a is a hold that everybody gets. It's on there until you attend orientation, and then it's lifted. And um, it's not a bad thing. It's just something that helps us as staff know. Okay, this is a new student. We need to help them with their schedule. They need to attend orientation. Once you've attended orientation, hold's gone. Um, but uh, that, again, that's something my staff can help you with all day, every day. So I'll put that um, 855 number in there because that's the one that, that we use 24 seven. And it's in both English and Spanish. So when you go to uh, wichita.edu backslash one stop, you can click on the um, 
the Spanish link and it has everything translated for you. And we have staff that can take phone calls in Spanish as well. So one of the things I've been working on is I wanna make sure students and parents as they're going through these processes can be a team um, as you build, um, build your way towards college. And a lot of times when I work with students, the student will have to translate. Um, and I, I want them to be one. I don't want there to be a middle middleman. So we we uh, we have that up and running. We really want you to, to take advantage of that if you need it. Also want to give a big shout out to Pat Albers. My best friend since second grade is on this call and I'm super nervous. I'm usually not nervous on these, but he's on. So I'm like, oh gosh, he's going to let me hear it. And with that, we're going to end Aaron's time presenting. <laughs> uh, he'll be around, though, at the end to answer any additional questions for anyone who wants to hang out. Next up from our Office of First Year Programs is our Assistant Director, Adrian, who is going to visit with you about orientation and what's available there. All righty. Thank you, Bobby. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Adan, and I'm the Assistant Director of First Year Programs. So I'm overseeing part of your orientation and transition experience here to Chakra Nation and just want to kick off by saying congratulations on completing your high school degrees and um, also for committing to WSU. We're really excited to have you here. Next slide, Bobby. When we think about the requirements we have for our incoming first year students, there are really two things from the Office of First Year Programs that we require of you. And those two being completing your pre-orientation modules and also attending the one-day summer orientation program, which is in person here at the WCU Central Campus. Next slide, Bobby. When we think about our orientation, pre-orientation modules, these are pre-orientation modules that you complete prior to attending your actual in-person orientation program. They're meant to be an introduction to some of the resources we here have here at WSU. And also so that once you actually come to your in-person orientation program, you kind of already have some idea of the resources and can also ask some more detailed questions of the, from the folks who see here in orientation. If you already have RSVP'd for orientation, awesome. Our pre-orientation modules will go live, live on May 1st. So you'll be getting an email to your Shocker email on how to um, access and also complete these pre-orientation modules. If you sign up for orientation at a later time, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, you'll also receive that email on how to access and also complete these pre-orientation modules. The topics of these pre-orientation modules are found below. So focusing on academics at WSU, college finances, community standards and expectations, wellness and services, and also an optional Shocker Strengths presentation as well. And so this orientation experience should only be up to around 25 to 30 minutes. So when you're thinking about um, signing up for orientation, just know that you will have this 30-minute um, um, self-paced module for you to complete prior to attending orientation. Next slide, Bob. Thank you. Okay, so when thinking about our actual one-day in-person orientation experience, so our first program is on June 6th, and the, our final program would be all the way through August 15th. And really the goal of our orientation experiences is for you to connect with new shockers, so other new students who are coming to our institution, learn about different involvement opportunities inside of the classroom, through student organizations, but also within your academic departments and academic colleges, hear from first year advising, and also getting an introduction to some mental health services we have here at WSU. One thing to know about our orientation programs are that we do have two separate tracks. Um, we have a track that's for our students and also one that our parents. Um, although it is required for our students, it is highly encouraged for parents, supporters, guests to also attend orientation, just so you can learn more about how you can best support your student as they transition to WSU. On that same note, we are offering um, a Spanish parent and guest orientation. So if you have a parent or supporter who um, would benefit from attending a solely Spanish session, we will have three dates picked out over this summer. Um, that will be offered solely in Spanish for our Spanish parent and guests. Another thing to know is that freshman orientation, um, another note of freshman orientation is that we do offer parent programs for each freshman orientation. So just note that we do have their forever experience. If you need help on how to sign up for orientation, we do have a QR code found below. 
Next slide, Bobby. Now we do, although those are the only two required portions of orientation and transitioning to our campus, that being the pre-orientation modules and attending the online or the in-person orientation experience here on our campus, we do have some optional, but also highly encouraged experiences for you to consider, those being our preseason events, as well as our welcome weekend shock bus. Next slide, Bobby. So you've heard a little bit in the chat about some of our preseason events, Pass for Success being one of them. So these are programs that occur the week or two prior to the actual start of classes that are meant to really get you connected um, to our campus. It's additional opportunity for you to connect either um, with folks who have similar identities as you do um, within our Passage to Success, that is for our underserved, racially and ethically diverse students. Um, if you identify as being first generation, first steps might be one for you to consider. Or if you're also looking to get a kickstart in your academic experience, you could also consider the different sessions such as the Shocker Engineering Academy, Pre-Nursing, Success Academy, Math Launch, and much more. If you want to learn more about the specific programs and the different dates that they're offered, there's also a QR code found on the right that will link you to all of these preseason programs and learning what they're all about. Next slide, Bobby. Lastly, when we think about our final kind of piece um, prior to classes of getting you just excited and getting connected with other folks is attending our Shock Fest. So Shock Fest is WSU's welcome weekend that um, occurs the three days prior to our actual classes starting. So this will be starting on the Friday, going all the way to Sunday, August 18th. Again, this opportunity for you to connect with other new students, um, get involved within your academic college, and mostly, and more importantly, is just to have fun. And some of our signature events for our Shock Fest is kicking off with our first year luncheon. So having lunch with every other new Shocker here on our campus. We will also have an academic college um, welcome. So hearing more about your specific um, faculty members, your assistant deans, your deans, and those who will support you through your academic experience. So this weekend is going to be a lot of fun. And we're really excited to kick off all these events to get you connected to WSU. Um, and in short, like I mentioned, Shockfest is not required. It's optional. The only two things that are really required are the pre-orientation modules and attending the one-day orientation program. Next slide, Bobby. So action items. So if you have not signed up for orientation yet, please sign up for orientation. You can go to wichita.edu slash orientation to sign up. From that, you will get access to your pre-orientation module. So be sure to complete those prior attending orientation. We'll be sending you reminders on that. And finally, attend your summer orientation program. With that said, that's all the information that I have. Um, I'm not going to go through the chat and look through some of the questions, but if you have any questions or concerns about registering for orientation, there are some things that you might be confused about or it's just not giving you access, please contact us. We're um, responsive to email every day at first.year at wichita.edu, or also give us a call at the phone number below. And lastly, just a plug also for our Instagram page for our first year programs office. Uh, Aaron Hamilton mentioned uh, an app that's available to download. Would, would you be able to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, of course. Give me one moment. Oh, yeah, for sure. So this is a new app for our campus. Um, this will be called Student Navigate. This app is really an opportunity for us to just get a little bit more idea of the different things you want to get involved with. Um, while we're here at Wichita State University, um, just so we can get some more focused uh, kind of outreach to you and making sure that you're really connecting into all the spaces that you're wanting to connect to. Um, and also just give us kind of that extra line of understanding of, oh, you know, you might be once involved with um, different cultural organizations, or maybe you're interested in participating in a certain applied learning opportunity. There's really an opportunity for us to just give you that additional outreach and ensure that you're meeting all the goals that you have in your first year while you're here at WSU. But there's also an app that's helpful for you through your whole experience here at WSU. We'll talk heavily about the Student Navigate at our in-person orientation experience. Great. Yeah. Wow. Not seeing any other questions pertaining to orientation. 
but I might jump back and open the floor to other areas. Uh, Jing, I think there were a couple of questions that you've uh, talked about either in the chat or otherwise. Uh, I don't know if there's anything you want to expand on. I'm kind of searching through the chat to find them. Uh, do you want to talk about Scholarship Universe? Maybe that's one I think that could yeah. be helpful for families and students. For sure. So the um, for any scholarships that are institutional, that deadline has already passed uh, since April 1. Um, and if you're waiting to see like what the status of those would be, um, just check your shocker email because the departments that are um, looking through those e um, applications right now, they're reviewing it and they'll be reaching out um, if you're moving forward uh, with it and um, all the guidelines there. But even after April 1, uh, there are still so many scholarships, like the more that you answer on the Scholarship Universe platform, the more you're going to be matched up with. And so you might be matched up with a lot of different external scholarships that have different deadlines that are out there that you would just click on. And we vet all these scholarships though, so they're safe through Scholarship Universe. Um, so, and then you just click on to those um, links in Scholarship Universe to apply to it in the external website. Great, thank you. Nathan, a couple of more questions about housing. Uh, uh, there's a, There was a question earlier about, can you bring a dorm fridge? I know you mentioned rentals are possible. Uh, can you speak to uh, the fridge situation for the dorm rooms? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of fridges, uh, if you're a shocker hall or the suites, you are able to bring your own fridge. Um, I know the packing list, that link has been put a couple times in chat. So check out that packing list. We have um, essentially a cubic foot requirement, so it has to be within a certain size. Um, so yeah, be aware of that. Make sure you don't bring, you know, any massive fridge. Uh, but in our experience, most mini fridges are within uh, our rules for, for what you're allowed to bring. And Mariah asks, what's the official deadline to pay for housing? And maybe a related question would also be tuition and fees. Yeah, so at least I know for housing, um, and I touched on it briefly, but uh, financial ops is going to split your housing and meal plan costs uh, into quarters for the fall semester. And then your deadlines are essentially by month. So you'll have a payment due, uh, generally speaking, at the end of September, a payment due at the end of October, payment due at the end of November, and then one due at the end of December. Um, and again, that's just your whole semester split into quarters. Great. Other questions from our audience. We're going to wrap up our time. Uh, there's a question about what's a pre-major. I'm trying to sign up for orientation. It's listing pre-med as my major, but I thought that was, it wasn't its own major. I don't know. Aaron, do you want to tackle that? Yes. Uh, what we do with pre-med majors is there are tracks of classes that you have to take. Um, every pre-med student has to take uh, chemistry, for example, anatomy and physiology. So my advisors will work with you on the pre-med classes, but also, um, as you state, pre-med technically isn't a major. It's a track um, that you take. And so we'll help you narrow down what major you want to get into while also keeping you in pre-med classes that, that we know you're going to need to take. So there's a certain sequence to each of our degrees and pre-med has its own sequence and, and we're well versed in that. And, and uh, we'll get you not only in the pre-med classes, but we, we encourage every pre-med student to join the pre-med student association association. It's a great way to get connected to um, medical professionals of all kinds, doctors, surgeons, nurses, um, every level. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, there was a question maybe for Shane uh, regarding scholarships and scholarships universe. Uh, goes on to say, do, with the delays in FAFSA, will there be any additional scholarships uh, that will be brought back? Maybe you should answer that one in the chat, Shane. It's, it's yeah. pretty specific to that situation. <clears throat> yeah, I can answer in the chat then. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ariana asks, so I don't need to declare another major at this moment. Is that something I need to work with later on with an advisor? That's probably for Aaron to follow up on his last question. Correct. Um, you don't, you can just stick with pre-med right now. And then uh, as we build the schedule, we'll work with you to see, you know, what tracks you may be interested in. 
Um, someone asked, how do I apply for the Alumni Legacy Scholarship? And uh, that actually has transitioned this year. Um, it's only available now to, to college juniors and seniors. So for freshmen, um, they've, they've moved that um, just to the juniors and seniors starting this year. I only know that because my daughter got it last year and this year she's not. I'm not upset at all. It's fine. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, other <laughs> questions from our audience. I think we've got most of this covered and we are just a little past an hour. So uh, as Ooh, we're wait, up, Bobby. Please, Aaron, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I do this to Bobby all the time. He's on that alumni legacy scholarship. That one is no longer available. But if you um, email alumni at wichita.edu, they have a new one that they have developed that's a leadership style scholarship. Um, and I believe it's the same kind of criteria where the parents have to be alums of Wichita State or grandparents. Um, they would know for sure. But alumni at wichita.edu is their email address. I'll put that in the chat. Sorry, Bobby, you didn't mean to cut you off. That's all right. Uh, and it looks like we're kind of winding down here and we've answered the majority of the questions. Uh, but again, I would uh, reiterate that if some of your questions weren't answered, uh, and we also encourage folks to follow up individually with departments uh, because so many situations and questions are specific to our students and families. So we want to make sure we give you proper service. So reach out to the various folks listed. We'll provide the link to the video as part of this follow up. I do want to just take a minute and thank uh, the folks behind the scenes answering questions uh, in chat and helping us with attendance, uh, both Mandy Harmon and Autumn uh, Bennett from the admissions team are here to help us. And then lastly, I also really just want to thank all of my colleagues from all of our other departments here on campus. These folks worked all day serving our students that are here already, and then they were gracious enough to spend extra time in their offices and, and serving you all and answering your questions. So, so special thank you to them for joining us tonight. That being said, we're going to close down our event. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on campus at orientation. Take care.